Game design is the backbone of game development, so with good design, your games can stand tall among the masses of others on the market. We already discussed that a game designer is just somebody that makes decisions about how a game looks, sounds, and feels. And I mentioned that to be a good game designer, you need to be a good decision maker. In this video, we'll discuss what Jesse Shell in The Art of Game Design says is the most important skill for game designers. If you're interested in the book, look for the link in the description. It's an affiliate link, so by using it, you get the added benefit of helping out my channel at no extra cost to you. Any and all skills can be useful for game designers. You may think of things like brainstorming or communication, or more creative skills like storytelling, writing, and music. The list goes on, but there's one skill that Jesse Shell claims to be the most important, and I agree. He says the most important skill for game designers is listening. Listening allows you to create the game that you envision and that your players want. This one skill is the key to making better decisions and consequently being a better game designer. In the book, listening is broken down into five different types. And if you're a solo developer like I am, then you may think that not all five apply to you, but I encourage you to find ways to use them. Doing so gives you the opportunity to practice and it also benefits the games that you make. The first type of listening is listening to your team. And before you say, but I don't have a team, we'll get to that soon. When you're working in a team, every member usually has different skills and different ways of thinking about things. So being able to listen to those you work with means that you can work more effectively together and you'll be able to share all of those skills to achieve the best outcome. For all the solo developers, I recommend practicing this by letting your friends or family give their input in the design process as if they're part of your team. Ask them for input on design decisions you're facing right now. And this can be a huge benefit to you because their ideas may be wildly different from yours. And that can be enough to get you to start looking at the decision from a different point of view. Sometimes it can give you a great idea that you want to think about more. Just make sure you don't start daydreaming about your own idea while you're supposed to be listening. I like to write my ideas down to get them out of my head for a bit so I can keep coming up with more ideas rather than clinging on to one. I actually carry around a small notebook and a pen so that I can write down any ideas I have throughout the day. I think the second type of listening is one of the most important types. That is, listening to your audience. This is your player base, so it's a good idea to listen to what they want. This tends to be a bit more difficult than listening to your team, though. When you're talking with your team, you all share some inside knowledge that can make the discussion go more smoothly, and usually everybody can say what they're thinking, or at least get the main idea across. But when it comes to players, sometimes they don't actually know what they want, so you need to listen with more than just your ears. You need to listen to how they react when they play your game, and watch closely to see what they like and what they don't like. Sometimes you'll be listening more with your eyes than your ears, trying to see what mechanics seem to frustrate or confuse players, or which mechanics they're enjoying the most. This is where playtesting can be really useful. It gives you the opportunity to see what players think are the best and worst parts of your game. Find people who will let you watch them play your game, and try to avoid interfering or walking them through parts when they get stuck. Instead, take note of why they got stuck, or what might be frustrating to them. This all goes hand in hand with the next type of listening, which is listening to your game. This means you need to be able to tell what is working and what isn't just by seeing, hearing, and feeling how your game plays. You should know your game better than almost anything else. When this is the case, you can tell where there's a problem immediately. And again, this type of listening takes more than just your ears. Games all have a certain feel to them, and you want to make sure that your game feels right. Think about games like Celeste, where the controls have a satisfying feel to them. They're really responsive, and the character moves exactly where you want it to be. If the character was drifty and loose, then the game would feel awful, and it would be even more frustrating than it can already be. The next type of listening is listening to a client. In some cases, you're going to have a client that you're making a game for, and they'll have certain requirements for the game that you have to meet. Ideally, you should talk with them and come up with these requirements together. Just like listening to your audience, doing this lets you listen to what the client truly wants rather than what they think they want. This isn't just a one-time thing either. You should meet with the client regularly, because they're likely to change their mind on things, and you'll need to redefine the requirements and update your design to meet them. If you don't have a client that you're making a game for, then it's best to think of yourself as the client. Come up with a few criteria like your target audience, the genre of the game, or some specific feature of the game, and base your design around that. 
There should still be plenty of room to be flexible, and you'll need to play multiple different roles, but it'll help you guide your game. By doing this, in a way you're practicing the last type of listening, which is listening to yourself. I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but I find this to be the most difficult type of listening by far. It often requires multitasking, because you need to listen without interrupting your thoughts. And you need to be able to get past what you're thinking on the surface to uncover what you really know to be true. This is where feeling really comes into play. You need to be able to analyze how you feel about your game without interrupting that feeling. Jesse Shell discusses some ways to manage that, which we can talk about more later. A lot of the chapters in The Art of Game Design come back to this idea of listening, and they'll get us to start thinking more about how we can use each type. Employing all five types of listening and practicing them will give you the information you need to make the best choices for your game, and that means we're on the way to becoming better decision makers, and therefore better game designers. In the next video, we're going to talk more about what exactly a game is, which should help us start thinking about our games like real designers. Be sure to like and subscribe, and if you want to be notified of the next video, hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.